Assalamualaikum and very good day to all of you. So today we're going to continue our lecture for chapter 3. Okay, in chapter 3, which is related to static of rigid bodies in two dimension. As you all know, this is uh, the part 2 of this chapter, which is we will cover about the equilibrium of rigid bodies. So, by the end of this session, it is expected that uh, the student will be able to analyze and solve the problems involving the equilibrium of rigid bodies, okay, by using the three equation of the equilibrium. So, what is the three equation of the equilibrium which is really important in this chapter? So, I will explain to you later on. So, what is of equilibrium of rigid bodies or in other words how can we identify whether the object is in a condition of equilibrium okay so a rigid body is actually uh, known as equilibrium when the external forces acting on a system equivalent to zero okay and a system has no resultant force and no resultant couple. Okay, so therefore, in order to comply this definition, okay, these are the three equations which is define the state of equilibrium for rigid bodies, which is the first one is the summation of the force in the x direction should be zero and the summation of the force in y direction should be zero and summation of the moment uh, at any point yeah so this one is actually at any point okay is zero okay so all of the external force uh, acting on that body should be comply with these three conditions Okay, so actually what we can find by knowing that the rigid body is in the condition of equilibrium. Okay, so from the concept of equilibrium of rigid bodies, we know that we can use these three equations to solve or to determine any external force uh, reacted on that body. Okay, so for example, according to this diagram, okay, actually this is a structure to lift up the load here okay so usually we need to determine what is the external force acted on the body so according to this diagram here okay we need we the question may ask you to determine the external force at a and external force at b okay or we call it as reaction support okay so these are the part that we have to determine, okay? The force at A and force at B, okay? So, how can we determine this value, okay? So, by using all the information provided in the question and plus with these three important equations in equilibrium of rigid body, okay? We may solve that problems, okay? So, how, okay? The first thing is we should know how can we translate this diagram into free body diagram. Okay, so this is the free body diagram for the, the schematic diagram here. Okay, as you notice here, okay, the force at A, it may have two types of the force, which is force in a, X direction and force in Y direction. Okay why this kind of force okay will look like this okay why of this support structure should have these two force why can't it just has ax or why can't it just has ay why is supposed to have ax and ay and same goes to b why this kind of support structure should have this force 
the force here which is in um, horizontal direction in this way. Okay, so all of it I will explain to you later how can we identify the direction of the support reaction. Okay, and how can we draw it uh, and turn it from schematic diagram into free body diagram. Okay. Like for example, like this one, okay, we know that this load is applied here. So of course, the force will go downward like this. So that's why it's been symbol like this in here. Okay, and same goes to here, which is this is the center gravity of this crane. Okay, so that's why the weight of the crane is located here. Okay, and this is due to the gravity force. Okay, so I will explain to you how can we determine or differentiate what type of external force exerted at many different type of friction support okay these are the important table for us to know or to identify the direction of the reaction or force on support structure or support connection okay so this is a common reaction at supports and connection for a 2d dimension two dimensional structure okay so for example if you look at from the diagram it consists of roller it may symbol like this or like this or maybe it has a rocker or frictionless uh, surface okay so there will be a force with known line of action pointing uh, 90 degree of the face that is touched okay so for example here okay the rocker here okay it touch on this surface so the surface will cause a force rebounds back towards that structure so that's why it will look like this Okay. So in other example, for example, if you look at the diagram, for example, like this is a wall here, okay, and the rocker located somewhere here or the roller located somewhere here. So where do you think the direction of the force? Okay. So as I mentioned before, it should be 90 degree uh, force with the surface. Of reaction okay so for example it touch here so 90 degrees of face towards this uh, roller okay roller it should be like this okay so in other words any surface that it touch okay it will give another opposite force back to the structure back to that support okay okay we done with the roller and rocker now it goes to the second one which is short link or short cable okay so if you look at this diagram this structure is connected with short link or short cable so since that this short link seems like holding it okay so that's why it kind of uh, caused the reaction in that way okay so that's why if you see here okay it will may produce reaction in that way where the direction where it pulling it up okay okay meanwhile the other one which is the color of frictionless uh, road or frictionless pin in slot okay it will cause 90 degree of the force okay with line of action okay it will look like this for example like this one it touch on the surface okay so therefore the surface where it touch okay and the line of action like this so it will cause the force in 90 degree direction from the surface that it touch okay so it will look like this so these are the three force or reaction force in which that we know where is the line of action for that force okay so for this one, this is where the force of our reaction, which is we don't know or not sure yet the line of action, okay, the, the direction or the line of action, okay. So, for example, if there's, there's a structure of a frictionless pin or hinge or there's a rough surface, okay, so the force still uh, will occur to that structure, but 
we don't know what is the angle or where is the where is located okay so we may just can assume okay for example like this one okay just force for this one it may happen like this okay it has an angle here okay with alpha so instead of putting in the alpha we can also uh, draw it okay or locate it Okay, the force in x and y direction in which that we resolve this force into fx and fy component. Okay, so for example, it may uh, pointing like this fy and fx, or it may pointing the other way direction. Okay, like this, or any other option because we don't know so we just assume that it will be uh, pointing like that okay so we don't know the direction and magnitude of the force okay or in other structure which is we call it as a fixed support fixed support is just kind of additional uh, friction like this like the frictionless pinch but it has another additional term which is it has a moment here okay instead of force which is similar to the one that we have before but it also consists of moment okay or couple in which we also don't know the direction of the force and the direction of the couple and of course we don't know the magnitude of the force and magnitude of the couple okay to make you understand better about this topic okay let's do this example one okay so as, so, as shown here okay a fixed crane has a mass of 1000 kg so this is actually the crane itself okay it has uh, a mass of 100 kg oh, sorry 1000 kg okay and it is used uh, to lift up a 2400 kg crate okay so this is the weight or load that it needs to lift up okay it is held in the place by a pin at a and a rocker at b okay so a is actually pin and b is actually a rocker okay and the center of gravity of the crane is located at g okay so this is actually the center of the gravity for the crane Okay, so determine the component of reaction at A and B. So we want to determine the reaction at A and at B. Okay, so we know that the B is a rocker. So we know for the rocker, the line of action is known. Only the magnitude that we need to determine. So this is the force at B. And what about at A? So at A is pin. So for pin, the line of action is not known okay it is unknown so we can assume okay uh, the direction of force at a okay whether it may be ax and ay like this or any of the direction that you want to assume for example like you want to assume like this ay and ax it's okay it's fine it's up to you you just make an assumption towards the direction but later on when you apply the equilibrium equation for this uh, structure okay you may know whether your assumption is correct or wrong okay so it has a mass of 1000 kg so the crane itself it has mass of 1000 kg since it's mentioned here that the center of gravity for the crane is at g so therefore the mass of the crane should be located here okay which is the mass is 100 sorry 1000 kg okay so let's take a look how can we solve this problem okay so let's solve the question okay what is the first step that you should do okay the first thing that you should do is you should draw the free body diagram Okay, so this is the schematic diagram, the original diagram which is given uh, to you from the question. So how can we transfer it into free body diagram? Okay, so 
as I mentioned before, okay, this is uh, the table that I showed to you before, okay. So, for example, in this question, we do have the rollers here, okay, or the rockers here, okay. So, it is shown that the rocker will have the line, uh, the, the force with line of action straight away opposite to the touch surface in 90 degrees. So, it touch the rocker here touch on this surface, the wall here. So therefore, the force here should be pointing like this, B. Okay. Now look at A. A here, it has pin. Okay. So the pin, we don't know the line of action. Okay. So the, therefore, we can make assumption on the direction of AX and AY. Okay. So maybe we can just assume whether AX or AY should be in the direction. As I mentioned before, it may be AX like this or an AY like this. Or it can be AY downward or AX on the left. Okay, it just based on your assumption. Okay. So for this case, okay, for this question, okay, I make assumption that AX pointing to the right and AY pointing to the top. Same like this. Okay, and I know that the mass of the crate, okay, is located on the centroid of the cake, uh, crate here. So that's why it's pointing downward here. Uh, how do I get this value? Is basically... The mass of the crate is known, which is 1000, and just multiply with the gravity acceleration, which is 981, 9.81. So, therefore, we got this uh, force here, which is force for G here is actually 9.81 kilo newton. Okay. And for this one, the load here, okay, we know that the force again uh, pointing downward because it's a weight, okay. So, in order to get the force at here, okay, so I just level it as the weight here equal to 2400 multiply with the gravity acceleration value. So, then I get this value. Okay. Okay, after we have the free body diagram, okay, we should solve the, uh, the external force, okay, according to the free body diagram that we have, okay. So, we know that we have to determine the AX and AY value at A and also B. Okay. So, which point or equation that we should start? Okay. By knowing that, we do have the three matrix equation, which is summation of moment at A equal, at any point equals to zero, and summation of force at X equals to zero, and summation of force at Y equals to zero. And we have to solve these three unknown value which is ax ay and b okay so which equation should we consider first and which point that we should choose okay so for example okay in this case okay the tips is you should choose the point in which that you can cancel out many unknown at the same time okay so for example in this case i will choose the point A in order to use the moment at A equals to zero so that from this equation, I will be able to solve what is the B value, okay, so that we can get the B value, okay, and by using the summation of the force at X equals to zero, I will use this force, uh, this equation to solve what is the AX, then you can get the AX value, and from the equation of Fy equals to zero, I will solve the value of Ay. Okay, so let's check it out. The calculation. Okay, by considering the moment at A equals to zero, okay, the force B will give a rotation, okay, here towards point A, the moment towards point A, and it will give rotation in clock, sorry, anti-clockwise. So that's why the sign here is positive because the rotation is anti-clockwise. Okay, let's proceed with the next force, which is the force at G, okay, due to the mass of the crate. Okay, 
So this force will cause the rotation of the moment towards point A in clockwise direction. So that's why it is negative. Okay. And it's multiplied with the distance, the perpendicular distance between A and G, which is 2. Okay, that's why it is 2 here. And the next force is the force due to the weight of the load here, which is 23.5. Okay. And the distance, perpendicular distance between this uh, load towards A is 6 meter. Okay, this is a distance. Okay. And this force will cause the rotation in clockwise direction towards point A. So that's why it has negative sign here. Okay. And at the end, after solving this equation, okay, I will manage to get my B value. So therefore, in this case, my B value is 107.1. Okay. And the direction is like this. And we seem to the direction that we... Uh, mentioned before in the free body diagram. Okay, let's proceed with the fx and fy equation. Okay, so for fx equals to zero, as I mentioned that I will use this equation to solve my ax. Okay, so at the beginning, I assume that ax in this direction, which is pointing right. Okay, so I Substitute into the equation, Ax is positive plus B. B is in, uh, the force at B, which is in X direction of the force. Okay, And we don't have any more force in X direction. So equal with to zero. Okay, And at the end, you get that Ax equals to negative 107. Okay, what does it mean by negative sign here? Okay, well... Whenever you get the negative value after you make assumption and substitute into the equation, it means that your assumption is wrong. Okay? So take a look at this one here. Okay? At the beginning, you assume that Ax in this direction. This is your assumption. But after do the calculation and substitute into this equilibrium condition, you will get the negative value. Okay. So once you get negative value, which means that your assumption is wrong. So therefore, Ax should be pointing the other way around, the opposite direction compared to your assumption. So therefore, Ax is actually 107.1 kilonewton. Pointing to the left. Okay? Okay, now let's proceed with Fy equals to 0. Summation of Fy equals to 0. So we assume that Ay pointing upward, so it's positive, And minus with force due to the G here, which is negative. And force due to the weight here, which is negative. And at the end, you get this one as positive. So, as I mentioned, if you get the positive value, which means that your assumption is correct. So, you assume that Ay is upward. So, your answer is supposed to be same as your assumption, which is on upward direction. So, that's it. We already solved uh, the unknown for external force. Okay, let's move to the next example, which is example 2. Okay, so the example 2 here, which is uh, mentioned that frame, okay, this is the frame structure. It is supported by the roof of a small building, okay, and the, ex the tension in cable, in the cable is 150 kN. So basically, this is the cable. The DF is actually the cable, okay, in which that the tension in this cable is 150 kN. Well, when it's mentioned it is tension, that means the force is pointing upward, uh, outward, outward. It's pointing out, okay? So the force in this cable is 150 kN, okay? So the question asks you to determine what is the reaction at the fixed end at E. Okay, here, this is the reaction of the external force that we need to determine. 
Okay, let's check it out. How can we solve the problem? Okay, so let's start first. Okay, as usual, we will draw the free body diagram. Okay, so we know that the tension is pointing outward. Okay, however, the force and moment at E, how do we know that it is like this? Okay, from the question, okay, it mentioned that at E is a fixed end. Okay. So, based on the table that I showed you before, which is the table of reaction and support, okay, when it is fixed support, it will cause one of the unknown force and one of the unknown, sorry, one of the force with unknown direction and one of the couple with also unknown direction. Okay, so that's why we assume that EX like this and EY is in this direction and with another moment okay moment here moment with unknown direction so we just simply assume that okay so next one is we can use this three magic equation okay what should we do first okay so first one i solve the fx equals to zero why do i choose i choose the fx equals to zero so if you look at this diagram we don't have much of the fx uh, force okay so we just have might have due to the force uh, by the cable the tension cable in which the, this one can be resolved into fx and fy so this is one of the force which is contribute to the fx direction force okay and we have ex okay so ex Plus with the force in x direction, which is 150 kN, in which that we resolve it. Okay, so how can we resolve it? Okay, there are two ways. Whether you can find the angle here, or you can straight away use uh, the magnitude of the tr uh, trigonometry given in the question here. Okay, so for example here, okay, we have force here which is 150. And you know that this is 5, 4.5, and here is 6, and here, which is can be your hypotenuse, which is 7.5. Okay, so in order to solve into fx, okay, this fx, okay, okay, so fx located same on this line, so that's why. 4.5 okay divided by the hypotenuse of the triangle 7.5 okay and multiply with 150 then you will get that ex equals to 9 minus 90 kilonewton okay as i mentioned previously when you get it negative it shows that your assumption is wrong so instead of this way ex supposedly 90 kilonewton pointing to the right which is opposite to the direction that you assumed earlier okay how about the ey okay so ey we have quite many force in y direction here okay so we do have y which is positive ey and we do have the force here one two three four four force with the value of 20 kilonewton so that's why I just multiply 4 by multiply with 20 kilonewton and all of the force in negative direction okay minus with the force k okay, in the cable here in the tension of the cable okay since that it pointing downward so that's why it is negative okay so if we want to get the fy the fy uh, is parallel to the value of 6 in this trigonometry okay, so that's why 6 divide by 7.5 equals to 0 and end up you get that ey equals to 200 kilonewton which is that is positive so your assumption is correct so ey supposedly same as you assume earlier okay and last one we want to get the moment at e okay in this case you assume that moment at e is anti-clockwise or it's positive okay so we still consider that moment at e equals to zero k 
Okay, so all of the force contribute to the moment, okay, including this one, 20 times with 7.2. This is a distance from the, this force here towards the E. And 20 times 5.4, okay, maybe the second one. Okay, and 20 times 3.6, this one. And 20 times 1.8, this one. Okay. And all of these small force give the positive moment. Okay. And the force due to the cable, okay. Uh, this one, okay. If you look at here, okay, it has two force when we resolve it Fx and Fy. For Fx, it didn't have the perpendicular distance. So that's why you can cancel out the effect of Fx towards the moment at E. It's only Fy which may give the moment towards E. Okay, so that's why. I just choose force which is resolved into Fy direction, which is 6 over 7.5, okay, similar to this one, okay, and multiply with the force here, and the direction between Fy towards E is 4.5, and plus with Me, and this is the value that we are looking for, okay, after you substitute into the equation, Okay, you will get that Me is 180 kN meter. So, since that the value is positive, it shows that our assumption here at the beginning is correct, which is the moment at E is in anti-clockwise direction and the value is 180 kN. Okay, that's it. We already solved the problem. Okay, let's proceed with the third example, okay. For the third example, okay, the question is mentioned that a loading car, it is at the rest condition on the inclined track. So, this track can has kind of slope, okay, here. The gross weight of the car and its load is... 5,500 Newton. Okay, so there's the gross weight of the car and it is applied at G. Okay, so we know that G is here. Okay, so that means the weight okay, due to the car, mass of the car and all the loads here is 5,500 Newton. Okay, the car, the car is held in position by the cable. Okay, so the car is holding or keep maintained at this position by using this cable. Okay, that means that this cable is pulling upward like this. Okay, so determine the tension in the cable and direction at each pair of the wheels. So what will be the tension in this row? And what will be the reaction on each wheel? So we have two wheel. The first wheel, okay, wheel number one and wheel number two. Okay, so this is the three unknown that we need to get from this diagram. Okay, let's check it out. How can we solve this problem? Okay, as usual, we have to draw the free body diagram first. This is the original diagram and we have to convert into free body diagram. Okay, so as you can see, the tension in the cable here, okay, is represented by this force, this arrow. Of course, it is tension, the cable has tension, so that's why it is pointing outside, okay. And it has a roller here. Roller, we know that it will cause a force in 90 degree towards where it touch. Okay, so that's why it's become like this, R1 and R2. Okay, and the G, okay. The weight of the body always pointing downward like this, which is the weight. We know that it is given from the equation is 5,500 Newton. Okay. So, how it become like this? Okay, actually this one, this two force is not exist. Okay, how do I convert this 5,500 force into 
two force which is W Y and W X force. Okay, let's check it out. Okay, so just imagine that this is the surface, the inclined surface, and wish that we know that the angle of this inclined surface here is 25 degree. Correct? Okay, and this is the car. Okay, and the car here has a wig, which is W here. Okay, and still have the angle here is 25 degree. Okay, this is the surface I touch. Okay, so instead of uh, putting the angle like this, like the normal one, which is y and x in this direction, we change it into angle like this, which is y and x. That's why you see here is sign y here and x like this. Okay. So maybe from the solution here, okay, it looks like this. Okay. So now. This is X and this is Y. Okay. So this is the resultant of the W. Okay. So now I need to resolve this W into X and Y. Therefore, I need to resolve the force. Okay. So in order to resolve it, okay, it will become like this. W X and W, Y. Okay? And remember, we do have the angle here, which is 25 degree, and our resultant force for W is here. Okay? So how can we convert it into W, X, and W, Y? Okay? Seems like W is the hypotenuse with the value of 5,500. Okay? So by looking at this, W... X, which is on the adjacent part, okay, so therefore, WX is equals to 5,500 times cos 25 degree. Meanwhile, for WY, which is located On the opposite side here, okay, W Y. So five thousand five hundred times with sine twenty five degree. Okay, so that's why I got five four nine eight zero for W X, and W Y is minus two three two zero because Y up here is positive, okay. Down here is negative. That's why y towards negative direction here. Okay, our wy is at this point. Okay, and wx, our wx in this direction. Well, in this question, in this diagram, it's considered that the, the this one is positive. But up to you, which which one that you want uh, to call it. Okay. Okay, so since we already have the free bar diagram, now we need to solve the equation by using the three magic equation. Okay, this is the magic equation. Remember that A there is actually summation of the moment at any point. It's not just at A, okay? And this is our free bar diagram. So first of all, okay, we can solve the R2, which is first at here, okay? by considering moment at A. So when I consider moment at A, I can cancel out the force or the moment uh, due to the R1. That's why you didn't see R1 in this equation. Okay. So summation of the moment at A equals to 0 is equal to the force of 2, 3, 2, 0, the W, Y. Okay. And this is the perpendicular distance. Okay. 
and this Wy will cause the rotation in which direction towards A? Okay, it will cause the, the rotation in clockwise direction. Okay, towards point A. That's why you see it is negative. Okay, so let's proceed with another force which is due to the W X here. Okay, so this W has X actually it does have the perpendicular distance, okay? Because G has perpendicular distance here, which is at 6. So, it's very small, okay? It's not on this line. It has a small perpendicular distance here, which is 6 cm, okay? And then it will cause rotation at clockwise direction, okay? So, that's why you see negative. And then plus with the R2. So the R2 is here. Okay. And the distance between R2, perpendicular distance between R2 to A is 50 from here to here. And then it will cause the rotation in anti-clockwise. So that's why you see positive. And by solving this equation, you will get your R2. Okay. Same goes to uh, R1 in which that to solve R1, you need to uh, choose the moment at B equals to 0. When you choose moment at B equals to 0, you can cancel out the, uh, the rotation due to R2 and you will get your R1. Okay, basically the same procedure, you just consider what is the moment, uh, what is the force contribute to that moment. Okay, and consider all the positive and negative due to the direction of the moment, whether it is clockwise or anti-clockwise. Okay, so you already solved the R1 by using moment at B. And last one for T. Okay, we know that T is located on the X axis. In this case, we consider that the other way on that one is Y direction and this one is Positive direction for x. Okay, so we solve the this equation for fx equals to zero. Summation of fx equals to zero. Okay, is contributed by the force due to the wx. Okay, wx, which is the value of wx, is four nine eight zero here. Okay, and minus with t. This is t. Okay, so this is the only two force involved in x direction. And that's why it is just equals to 0. So, T is 4980 and we got it positive. So, it means that our assumption towards the direction of T is correct, which is on that direction with the value of 5980. Okay, so that's it. We already solved this question. Okay, it's the end of this part 2 video. Thank you very much.